We are an island nation. The seas are ingrained in our culture, supporting livelihoods, a wealth of wildlife, and now a vital source of renewable energy. Our seas are home to globally important seabirds, such as puffins, kittiwakes, and gannets. The North Sea in particular is a hotspot for marine life, where many UK birds cross geographical and political boundaries in search of food and breeding sites. Seabirds, like kittiwakes, use our coastlines and shores to nest, but spend most of their life at sea, using ocean winds to traverse the waves in search of food. Our seas, although appearing a vast, open expanse of water, are actually an already incredibly crowded place to be, especially for a kittiwake. Despite travelling huge distances from land, they still come across human activity, such as fisheries, shipping, and increasingly, renewable energy. The acceleration of this tech is vital to move away from fossil fuels and reach net zero. But the poor planning of marine activities, alongside a legacy of impacts, including from renewables expansion, is contributing to the poor state of our seas. Climate change and wildlife loss are connected. Parts of the same problem that need joint solutions. To tackle climate change and restore nature, we need plans for our seas, plans that protect wildlife and the places they call home, while finding space for the vital expansion of offshore wind and other activities like fishing. In order to revive our seas, the acceleration of offshore wind must go hand in hand with actions that will help nature recover. Our seas are incredible places. What can look like a great big expanse of nothingness is actually home to incredible marine ecosystems and wildlife. Healthy seas, rich in nature and biodiversity, are essential for our lives on this planet. The ocean produces the oxygen in every second breath we breathe. Our health and the health of our seas are inextricably linked. Our oceans have an enormous role to play in the climate crisis, storing a quarter of the carbon that we humans generate and regulating the planet's temperature. Offshore wind turbines are big, much bigger than the ones on land. In fact, some of them are three times the height of Big Ben, and the wind farms themselves cover many hundreds of square kilometres. Just one rotation of some turbines can power a UK household for an entire day or two. To reach net zero, offshore wind farms are going to have to be built at an unprecedented rate. When we start considering activities such as fisheries and shipping, you can see how busy our seas really are and how we need to ensure a future for renewables and nature. The UK government has set out ambitious targets for offshore wind development, but without proper frameworks in place to strategically and spatially plan this technology, there is a real risk to not only nature, but to net zero as well. Offshore wind, along with other renewable technologies, are driving the way forward in this fight on climate change, in this shift away from fossil fuels, which in themselves are incompatible with a net zero future. And this is why for the next 10 to 30 years of marine development, we need to be doing this in harmony with nature. We have a real opportunity here to work together. This is pioneering ground. We're on the edge of a renewable industrial revolution and we need to understand collaboratively how we can best use this opportunity for nature and for our energy transition. And this is gonna take a government-led approach to the way that we use our seas, not only for offshore wind, but for fisheries and for shipping too. One of the best things that we can do is to ensure that there are areas of our ocean that are properly protected from human activity, giving nature a chance to bounce back after years of damage, allowing our seas to perform these amazing roles in mitigating climate change. We're at a crossroads. We could continue an approach that we know threatens both nature and our energy transition, or we can rise to the challenge, using this moment as a catalyst for change and embed nature-positive actions in the acceleration of offshore wind. Renewable technology, especially offshore wind, is key to tackling climate change and increasing energy security. But it must be developed in a way that protects and restores the health of our seas. We are calling for a government-led approach for activities at sea to be spatially managed, sustainable management of fisheries and protected marine areas. 
If we're to truly tackle the nature and climate emergency, we need to get this right from the outset. And that requires action now. We must harness the ambition of Nature Positive to catalyse ocean recovery and a truly transformative energy transition hand in hand. Our seas are an incredible, vibrant and powerful environment, but they are in trouble. We must change today to power tomorrow.